Hi, and congratulations on your 2022 Nissan Frontier SV Sport Package. This is a great package on this truck. What an amazing job Nissan did with this. Ton of great features on it, but you already know that that's why you bought the truck. So let's go back through all the features that you're gonna get with this and show you exactly why you bought it. And at the end, if you still have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can call, text, email, or stop into a Regan's Nissan at 60 Baker Drive in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, and we'll answer every question that we can for you. Let's have a look at your amazing new truck. We're gonna start right here with the infotainment system. We've got a beautiful eight inch color touchscreen display, very easy to operate. A couple of things I do wanna point out, your audio sources are AM, FM, satellite radio, which is free for the first three months. If you don't want it after that, don't do anything. It will just stop. If you do want it, it's going to revert back to the preview channel, which is channel one, at which point there is a toll free number right there that you can give a quick call to and just have a chat with them. They'll get you all signed up. We've also got, oh, sorry, USB one and two, which as I can see down here, USB 1 is a Type-C USB, USB 2 is a traditional USB port, Bluetooth audio, but what we don't see is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto because they are yet to be hooked up. Once they've been hooked up, those are options as well. Now what's really neat with this is that I have 36 presets that can be set. And as you see here, I can have a mix of FM and satellite all through here, making it really easy to make sure that all of my favorite stations are saved. Now, if we go into the settings and then connections, this is where we're gonna add a cell phone. Now I'm gonna remove this one by pressing the I, hitting delete and pressing yes. When you wanna add a cell phone, you go into the settings and then you go into connections. And then from there, you're gonna click on add new. Up on the screen, it's gonna pop up here. Go into the settings on your phone, then go into Bluetooth. You're gonna look for my frontier as we can see right there. On an Apple phone, tap on that. Once it pops up with the message, confirm the number matches. As long as it does, then you're gonna press pair and then allow. That's it, you're done. You can back right out. If you have an Android phone, you're still gonna press pair, but you're gonna press allow twice. If you have a lock screen on your phone, you're then gonna go back on your phone to the main settings menu. And from the main settings menu, you're gonna to go to lock screen then you're gonna to go to uh, Smart Lock, Trusted Devices, you're gonna add a trusted device and you're gonna add My Frontier. If you don't do that, your phone will not stay connected to the vehicle, so make sure that you do that. And then for your clock and the settings, you just wanna set clock manually and everything is really nice and easy to fix right there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set that and then that's all good there. We're gonna back right out and back where I started there. Down below here, I have dual climate control. So if I have a passenger who wants a different temperature than me, all they gotta do is change the temperature to whatever they want. Once they get out, I can simply turn that off and everything goes back to the driver's side setting. My recommendation would be find a temperature that you're comfortable with, press the auto button, your airflow where it's going to go, which can be changed here, and your fan speed, which can be manually changed here, will automatically take care of themselves. This is gonna be designed to get you up to or down to that temperature as fast as possible. So if I do this, you can see right away my fan speed is moving up. As Soon as I manually adjust it, it turns off auto. Down below, I've got my heated seats on either side here. I also have a leather wrapped heated steering wheel in this. Awesome feature for the winter time. Really nice and comfortable on the hands. This button here, is one of our safety features. So we're gonna talk about this one now, we'll talk about all the rest later. But when you are backing up, you have rear sonar and rear emergency braking. Now where you do have a class four trailer hitch receiver on the back, fully wired in, as you're backing up to that, and we'll see that with the backup camera here. We also have a dotted blue line here, so if I'm backing up, I can line up for a hitch. The problem there is I start to get closer, it's gonna to start to beep at me, that's my rear sonar. And once I get down around these red hash marks, if I don't turn this off, it will fully apply the brakes about a foot and a half away from whatever's behind me. If you're putting a bike rack back there or a trailer of any type, you're gonna to wanna to come down here and turn that off. That way your rear sonar and rear emergency braking are both turned off. 
you're not going to have any issues here. As we can see, as I turn my steering wheel, it does show me the curve line that this is coming in for to hook up that hitch that I might be trying to hook up. So we're going to set that back there. You've got multiple spots for storage, and these are all rubber pads here, making it really nice and easy and non-slip. Now you are driving a four-wheel drive vehicle where you're in two-wheel drive, and that's where you're gonna reside most of the time. If needed, you can flip to four high on the fly up to 90 kilometers an hour. Although to get to four low, you do need to be in neutral. Push in, twist, and now you go to four low. That tells me that I'm in neutral. It's also disabled some of my safety features here, as well as my traction control, because you do have a locking rear differential. So we're gonna go back to four high, and then we're just gonna turn it back to two wheel drive and put us back in park. Over here on my steering wheel, I have my cruise control settings. So I'm gonna turn this on. Right away, I can see this up here. Now, what I wanna show you right away because you are equipped with adaptive cruise. If I turn it back off and I turn it on and hold, I have normal cruise. So we're gonna go back to the adaptive cruise and then using this little button here, I'm going to adjust my distance down to two car lens plus safe distance or one or back up to three. By default, it's gonna start out at three. Once you get comfortable with it, you're gonna drop it down to two or one depending on your comfort level. Just to put it in perspective, one car length plus safe distance while doing 100 kilometers an hour is approximately two and a half car lengths between you and the vehicle in front of you. The faster you're going, the larger that gap will be because it requires more time to stop. The rest of my cruise control is fairly normal. I can press down to set, up to resume. I can cancel, or if my speed is already set, I can increase it or decrease it. On the left side of my wheel, we're going to start at the top and my source button is going to change my audio source here. So over to satellite and then AM and then FM, back to satellite. So lots of options there. You can do this right from here. When Bluetooth is hooked up or Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or anything through a USB port, those become options as well. This we're going to skip just for the moment. My enter button up or down is going to go through my presets so I can see them going up or if I tap it down, I can see them going down. My volume button right here works just like my dial over here. So I can do this. And then my Bluetooth hands-free is right here. So the bottom button is going to answer or hang up a call. My top button is going to allow me to make an outbound call. Now, if you have an Apple phone and Siri is set up, you can use this to access Siri simply by pressing and holding for two seconds. If you have an Android phone and you have Google Assistant, you can do the exact same thing. Just press and hold for two seconds. It will access Apple, or sorry, Siri or Google Assistant, depending on the type of phone that you have. Now, my left and right arrows here, we're gonna come back up. This is my home screen that I am on. I have a digital speedometer now, which is awesome and I have an average speed. Now I'm gonna press and hold that enter button in to reset my average speed. We're gonna go screen to the right. This is where we can see the pitch and roll of the truck as you're going through, especially in those off-road situations. It's really great. I can also see when I go from two wheel drive to locked in on four wheel into my four low. So you can see there, it gives me lots of information. I'm gonna go back to four high, shift back into park, and then switch to four low. My next screen over has some auxiliary gauges with my temperature and my battery life there. <clears throat> Got my oil pressure and temperature. And we're gonna come over and we're gonna see some driving information. Now the fuel economy on this is running exceptionally high because it's only gone 30.7 kilometers in an hour and 57 minutes. So we're gonna reset this again by pressing and holding that enter button. Everything's been reset. Next screen to the right is my average fuel economy, which we just finished resetting. I have my radio info right here, which is really great to be able to keep track of what's going on. 
You know, safety, I mentioned that we'd come back to this. My safety features. In the front of the vehicle, in behind the Nissan emblem, there is a radar. This is used for your forward collision warning. Forward collision warning is something you will experience. You could be driving down the road at 50 kilometers an hour while a vehicle up ahead is turning onto a side street. And as they round that turn, they're doing between 10 and 15 kilometers an hour. Once the radar in the front of your vehicle gets within range, inside here it's going to beep at you and it will flash a warning up on the screen here because unless the circumstances change there is a risk of a collision once your foot is on the brake or they finish rounding that turn all of that turns off and you carry on as if it never happened also through that same radar you have automatic emergency braking so if the car in front of you piles on the brakes inside the vehicle here it's going to sense that you're closing that gap really fast so it will beep at you it'll flash that warning the gas pedal is going to push back against your foot a little bit but you're not going to feel it because your foot's going to be going to the brake and if it doesn't get to the brake fast enough your new frontier will start to apply the brakes for you to help avoid or minimize an oncoming collision again the moment your foot is on the brake that entire system shuts down you are in total control of the vehicle you also have lane departure warning which is run through a camera up behind my rear view mirror here. With your lane departure warning, if you start to drift out of your lane, so that camera will read the lines on either side of you while doing 60 kilometers an hour or faster. And if you start to drift out of your lane, your steering wheel is gonna vibrate just like hitting the rumble strips on the side of the road to let you know you are drifting out of your lane. Also through that camera up there, you have pedestrian detection. With your pedestrian detection, it works the exact same as the automatic emergency braking, only it's going to work much faster. And instead of starting to apply the brakes for you, it's going to fully apply the brakes for you. You also have blind spot indicators, which I can see out here on the mirror. They will light up and stay lit up a dull orange as long as part of a vehicle is in your blind spot. While that's lit up, so let's say for example, my driver's side is lit up and while that's lit up, I signal to go left. That's now gonna to start to flash and it will beep at you inside the vehicle here. Great, great feature. That works at 32 kilometers an hour or higher and the vehicle beside you needs to be in motion. Therefore, it cannot be a barrier or a parked vehicle. You have rear cross traffic detection in the back of the vehicle. So as you're backing out of a parking spot, if there's anything coming at you from either side within approximately two car lengths, Inside your front here, it's going to beep at you to let you know, hold up, you need to stop, there's something coming at you. And whichever side it's coming at you from, the blind spot indicator on that side of the vehicle will be flashing to let you know. We already talked about the rear sonar and rear emergency braking. The only other thing that we have not talked about is going to be high beam assist. So with this, I'm going to force the headlights on by covering my light sensor. Right away, I can see my headlights are on, which are set to auto. And now if I push forward into the high beam position, I can see right down here, I have a little green bullet with an A in it. That means that my high beams are now automatic. Driving down the highway at night at more than 40 kilometers an hour, if there's anything at all in front of you, the high beams will turn off or they won't come on. The moment that there's nothing in front of you, they'll come on automatically. And then as soon as something rounds to turn at you, passes by you or comes down an off ramp in front of you, they'll turn back off automatically all on their own. So making it very easy to navigate through everything there and making sure that you're not blinding anybody in the process. Our next screen that we have here is our tire pressure monitoring screen. Now on this screen, once you start to drive, it will show you the tire pressure of all four wheels individually so that you can monitor them. And what the pressure should be set at is actually listed on the axles in between the wheels on the front and back there. And again, you'll see that once you start to drive. Now, no matter what screen you're on, doesn't need to be this screen. If you get a low tire, it will pop up and tell you low tire pressure. It's gonna tell you which tire's low and what the exact pressure is. From there, pull into anywhere that has an air pump. Leave your Frontier running, grab the hose and go to the tire that it says needs air and start putting air in the tire. When it gets to the proper pressure, the horn is gonna beep once to tell you to stop. If for some reason you keep putting air in or went to the wrong tire, there is an upper limit that you'll hit. If you hit this upper limit, it will beep the horn three times in a row. Please stop putting air in your tire at that point. However, if that happens, either do the same thing to the other three tires or 
the preferred method would be to start letting some air back out and once it gets back down to the proper pressure the horn will be wants to tell you to stop next screen over to the right is our settings so we're going to go into driver assistance i want to make sure everything is turned on here anything that's not simply highlight it press in the enter button then hit the back arrow here that's also your back button so come down to blind spot that's on same thing for the emergency brakes and the parking aids you want to make sure all of that is set up correctly and then we're back where we started so i'm going to come out of there i'm going to go into meter settings and main menu i want to see what's not currently turned on so this i am going to turn on Oh, that is the top one. So everything is turned on, so we're good. And then we're going to come back out. We're going to go to vehicle settings. Now, by default, Nissan vehicles will automatically turn off the vehicle when you turn them off. We've set this one so that the moment you shift into park, it will automatically unlock the doors for you. And then we're going to check the wipers. We're going to make sure that they're speed dependent. That way, when they're on intermittent and you're driving around town at, say, 40 or 50 kilometers an hour they'll be doing their thing with the delay that you've got set and if you speed if you turn out onto the highway and speed up that delay will actually shorten a little bit all on its own the last thing I want to do is go into my maintenance and I want to set my oil and filter for 8,000 kilometers which is your regularly scheduled maintenance intervals all laid out in section 9 of your owner's manual now, as you see, there's a lot of things in here that can be set. Check your owner's manual to see what the recommendations are for each thing and make sure you set them all accordingly. As we move down, everything is all good. And the last thing we see is a factory reset, meaning you cannot mess anything up. You can always reset it back to the factory settings. So we're gonna go back to the main where we started. Down below here, there is a tow mode, so if you are going to tow, make sure you turn that on. And right here on the screen, you see the word tow. We've got our dash brightness right here for when your lights are on. Now, there is 86 kilometers currently on this truck. If I press the trip odometer, I see a trip odometer. If I press and hold, it will reset. Same thing for trip B. Back to where we started. Now our blind spot indicators right here, this will turn off the volume to go with the beeping in case you do signal. Now what we're gonna see is in the bed of the truck and in the back, we do have a 400 watt or 12 volt port back there. It's an actual plug. We wanna be able to turn that on. There is a cargo lamp in the back as well. And we have hill descent assist. This is gonna help prevent you from picking up a bunch of speed when you're going down a hill, making it much easier on your brakes. And last but not least, we have a button to turn off the traction control. Now I recommend just leaving this alone. You are in a four wheel drive. In the back of this beautiful front here, you can see I've already got one of the seats flipped up and underneath it, I have some storage. Same thing on the other side. To put it back down, there's a little lever here. Down it goes. Also, on the back corner of the seats is a little tab that if I lift up, those seats will fold down, giving me access in behind. Now around here, I can see a 120 volt plug, along with two more USB ports strictly for charging. Moving around the back, I can see I've got a nice cap liner here, all along the edge of the truck. A spray and box liner. I've got some tie down areas all along the truck there. And I've got a couple LED lights in the bed of the truck of this sport package. Really great option. And if I just let go of the, ha the tailgate, you can see it's got dampeners on it to make for a nice, easy drop down and nice and easy to shut. Your backup camera is right here. Make sure to keep that clean. You can see we have our receiver right here for the tow package. And all of our wiring is fully set up on this. Sensors here are on the back bumper. Make sure you keep those clear in the winter as well. And then in the winter, make sure to keep this camera good and clear as well as this section down here because that's where your radar is. I know I mentioned earlier it was behind the Nissan emblem. It's actually down below there. The last thing I want to go over here is my key fob. Now because it's a fob, there is a battery in this and that battery typically lasts about two to four years. 
your very first indication that the battery is starting to get low. She'll get in, you'll go to start it, foot on the brake, push the start button right here, and up here it will pop up and say incorrect key ID. Just give it a minute, that'll go away, do it again, you should be able to start. That means it's time to think about changing your battery. Now, if you go without changing the battery, that message will pop up more frequently, and if you hit the point that it will not start, or perhaps it won't even open your door. And the back of the key is a little switch. There is a key for the driver's side door that will allow you in. Once you get in, take your Nissan emblem and with your foot on the brake, use that to push in your start button. It will still start your vehicle even though the battery may be dead. To switch out your battery, you can take it to your nearest Nissan dealership or simply pop the key out Get something into one of these two little areas right here. Give it a twist. This will pop open. Inside is a battery. It looks a lot like a watch battery, only a little bit bigger. The number on the battery is your battery size. They're about six to eight dollars at any big box store or drug store. Just get one of those, pop it in place, squeeze everything back together, put your key back in and you're good to go. Now on my key, I've got a panic button. I have unlock, lock, I do have remote start, so to work my remote start, I'm simply going to hit lock, lock, and then I'm gonna press and hold this top button for five full seconds, or five Mississippis, and it will start the truck from up to 200 feet away. From there, it's gonna run for up to 10 minutes. If you do not get in within 10 minutes, it will turn back off. You can do an addition to the timing from wherever you're at. So if it's been running for about seven minutes and you lock lock press and hold for another five seconds it'll run up to the 17 minute mark after that it will turn off and in order to reset it you do need to get in turn the vehicle on and get up to 30 kilometers an hour in order to reset that you can do two remote starts or one remote start with one extension without ever getting into the truck after that you do need to reset it congratulations again on your 2022 nissan frontier sv sport package is an unbelievable truck that you're going to have a lot of fun with and be able to get a lot of jobs done. I know Nissan did a great job, as do you, but if you still have any questions about any features that you have on this, please do not hesitate to reach out. You can call, text, email, or stop into a Regan's Nissan at 60 Baker Drive in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Ask for me or any of my colleagues and we'll help you out to the best of our ability. Hope to see you when you're in for your regular maintenance or when it's time for your next vehicle.